Good morning. morning. Today we're in Hebrews chapter 4, so it starts out saying the Word of God is living and active. It's actually kind of an eerie picture, if you just kind of take a step back and think about it. It's not just these words, it's not just printed words on a page, it has a life of its own. Um, it's like it has a will of its own, it's active, living and active. You know, you don't want to mess with anything that is living and active, mm-hmm. right? And in other words, the Word of God has wants to do something with your life. And I wonder if that's been our experience of the Word of God, you know, has Mm -hmm. it been that powerful thing that wants to do stuff with your life? Maybe you don't feel that way immediately, like just at the present moment or something like that. But if you kind of take a step back and look at the look at your life at at a span of over years, and I sometimes do that, you know, and you can Mm -hmm. see, wow, like I'm ministering, I'm doing stuff. We're like involved in ministry and good work, like. How did that happen? And he's like, oh, no, it's, it was the word of God. Mm-hmm. Actually, it convinced us. It rebuked us. It shaped my values. Yeah. So it was living and active. And I think we can testify to that. At different stages of life, I've experienced personally the word of God speaking to me in different ways. And I was just thinking back to when I was a freshman and for the first time wanted to read the Bible on my own. So I remember opening up the Bible and trying to read from Genesis and it being totally nonsensical to me and um, even though it was in English and then and you were an English major yeah Yeah. (laughs) and then finally I came to our church and so I was being taught and I had a greater spiritual hunger maybe for the first time ever and um, then it just really came alive in the way that it um, described my life described me and I really experienced it being um, very um, piercing Mm -hmm. so um, now as a middle-aged woman and doing ministry and again um, the same words that I've read over all these years still speak to me in different ways so um, as it says it's sharper than any two-edged sword it um, are you gonna draw it's gonna it divides soul and spirit (laughs) it's sharp it it's it it pierces it divides soul and spirit joints and marrow it discerns the thoughts and intentions of the heart so it's describing this um, these precision cuts that a priest would make for um, as they're killing animals yeah it's sacrifice. kind of so it so it sounds really painful but i know it, it's actually it is painful in a, in a sense but at, at the same time i think we experience being identified I, I hope that you've had that experience where you feel identified and therefore relieved like it describes our thoughts and intentions of the heart in a way that we ourselves didn't have the courage to even phrase and then finally all oh, the secrets out and saying and and there's this kind of relief Mm-hmm. that we can hear we can experience from the word of god mm-hmm. and then it goes on to say that no creature is hidden all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account and this whole thing sounds so uncomfortable it's pretty much the most uncomfortable situation you can think of um and it's uncomfortable because we don't want this kind of exposure yeah it's a flashback to, to genesis 3 i think um This whole idea of naked and exposed, you know, when Adam and Eve sinned and recognized that they were naked. They put on fig leaves. They hid among the trees away from God. And and now that is that's really become the uh, like a part of human sinful nature. We hide. We don't want to be naked and exposed. So that means um, what that means is that if the word of God is living and active and is, is there to expose us. And I think we actually know that. And fear that in our lives and instinctively that's why when, when we feel protective over sins we want to stay away from the Word of God mm-hmm. um, we put up thick shields you know to prevent the Word of God from piercing us or discerning our thoughts and motives and we quickly turn away and so we hear messages and we just quickly just want to move on and things like that so mm-hmm. so um, in order to fight this we need to be con- Um, committed to honesty and to confession but then again that's something we don't really seek out or want because it's so uncomfortable and so it feels like then how am I how am I going to be motivated to do this Um, I know it's good for me but do I just need to grit my teeth and do it but um, I was reading on to the next section of chapter four in Hebrews because Mm -hmm. I think if we end just on this note it's pretty frightening and scary but the next section says that we have a great high priest who has passed through the the heavens Jesus so um, who is 
not someone who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. And that's what gives us the confidence to draw near the throne of grace, receive mercy, and find grace to help in time of need. Mm-hmm. So that's the motivation. Once we recognize that our um, exposure is not going to end up just in condemnation, but that Jesus himself covered over our sin for us, that can give us confidence to come to the word of God and even experience that kind of exposure. Yeah. And um, the second part of it is like basic Psalm 119. You know, it says stored up your word. And a few comments about that is, yeah, like when you store it up, you store up anything for the future. So even if you don't see how the word of God applies to us at the moment, we kind of, you know, you store it up for later, you know. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I think that's what we're doing with like Bible equipping and things like that. So, mm-hmm. I mean, there's no way that we can even know how it's going to help us in the future, but mm-hmm. um, it does. And I, I was thinking about the mural that we saw last week and so many um, Bible reading initiatives. And I was really encouraged by that because as we're doing ministry to youth, we're helping them to store up God's word in their heart. And they do not appreciate it right now very much, but um, that's what's going to be what hap- helps them later on when, we're in that, when they're in that darker place and they need that guidance and that lamp. Yeah, so it said that, you know, like you said, the word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And I, you know, I don't know if you've, like, word is a lamp to my feet. Like, very literally, I was, <laughs> as I was doing this DT, I was, like, remembering that very traumatic experience of me climbing down from Yosemite Falls in pitch black. Yeah, I wasn't there. But... You weren't there, yeah. I'm thankful that you weren't there because mm-hmm. I would never hear the end of it. But you're the one who keeps bringing it Okay, up. that's true. <laughs> Okay, but anyway, it's like, yeah, like it was before cell phone days. Nobody had a flashlight except Tim Fitz, which, and, but Tim Fitz wasn't in our group. He actually went down early, you know. So then I had a group of about 15 to 20 people, and all I had was a Palm Pilot with... I don't think people know it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's this green. It's not even backlit. It's like barely backlit. It's like a, imagine a calculator with light, small light on it on the LED screen. It's like that. That's all I had, but you know, in pitch black, when you couldn't even see your own hand like this, I had it near my feet, literally, and I, I, and everybody was holding on to me like in a train, and then we would just we we're sneaking down. It took us four hours to go down a path that should have taken thirty minutes, but man, <laughs> lamp to my feet it was crucial because I would have we would have fallen off. We don't know where the path is otherwise, right? So, yeah, so people that was, are uh, groping around in life; they don't know where to go and they need we need that lamp that just takes us really to the next step it's not like your light showed you all the way to the end no but it well, we, we, see, knew, we knew we, we knew we knew where we need end. to go to though yeah and i just thought about like how like you know, without the word of god without your word the lamp to my feet and light to my path like well here, here the rest of the world doesn't have that lamp or the light mm-hmm. so then do they know it seems to suggest that they don't know where they're going like a light for my path they don't know they're meandering in the dark and i think that's a i thought about that like oh people generally think that they kind of know what they're where they're going but actually i think it's a profound truth that people without god's word without god's guidance really don't know there it is a me it's like me going down the like yosemite falls without without the light and going and i'm off track and i don't i have no idea without anything it's just kind of meandering and I think that's the state of our world because like when we ask people like, oh, where are you going or where are you headed? Like they might know like, oh, I want to do this. I want to do this next. Where are you headed? What's the destination? I mean, what's the answer? You know, Mm -hmm. like do they say heaven or hell or even death, which is so obvious, but nobody says that. The most common answer is I haven't thought about it. Or like I'm trying to figure it out or that, that is meandering in the dark. But, you know, we have the word of God, which is a lamp to my feet that leads us home. You know, so thankful for that. Amen. All right. Bye-bye. Bye.